Prince Philip, A Lesson in How to Be Royal By Colin Little Since Prince Philip passed away a day or two ago, there has been a tsunami of response and comment in the UK media, much of it echoed around the world. Most of it reveals the degraded state of modern British society, while almost all of it totally fails to explain the prince's appeal and popularity with the British public. Typical narratives about the prince stress his hard life, his mum was put in the nuthouse while his father farmed him out to relatives and boarding schools, his life of service, he was in the navy during World War II, etc., and his humanity, Princess Anne, he was somebody you could talk to. One documentary I saw even said that he was a refugee, his family was kicked out of Greece in the revolutionary aftermath of Greece's defeat against Turkey and managed to imply that, since the UK let Prince Philip in, it should let in all other refugees as well. The subtext to all of these talking points is that royals have to justify their existence by suffering, serving, and being human, compassionate, humble, etc., and that luckily for him Prince Philip just managed to pull this off, despite saying some very unwoke and on PC things along the way. Phrased in this way, you can immediately see what is wrong with the mainstream post-mortem narrative on Prince Philip. Namely, it sets a high bar that few royals are able to reach, while the ones that would, are not going to look very royal. In fact, once you've established the principle that there are certain standards to be met and certain hoops to jump through in order to be considered a functioning royal, then it won't be too hard to find flaws with practically all members of the royal family, up to and including Prince Philip. He, of course, is only being judged generously at the moment because he is in an upholstered box awaiting burial. The result of all this, would be to totally discredit, and destroy the entire royal system. But, before that, imposing such criteria would simply generate apologetic non-entities that have none of the royal, charisma, that Philip had in spades. In fact, we are some way down this road already. Prince Charles is a dithering fool who seems constantly mired in self-deprecation, while William and Kate are royal tryhards facing crowds with brittle smiles that beg the masses to like them. Indeed, most of the royals now look like they are guilty and apologetic simply for being there, and for leading lives of astounding privilege. The trick that Prince Philip managed to pull off was that he never looked sorry for being a royal. He was also happy to speak his mind and never afraid to open his mouth, even if he occasionally put his foot in it. Sure his service in World War II and as an effective consort for the Queen were appreciated, but this was not a major factor in his popularity. While the idea that he somehow suffered is absurd. He had a pampered and enviable life, and it certainly sounds like he had a wonderful time, staying at plush palaces and country houses, while mingling with the good and the great. As for his mad mother, Surely into each life a little rain must fall. The real reason Philip was such a successful royal was because he played the part to the full, loved the role, and was never ever apologetic about it. If you are going to go to all the trouble to have royals, that is exactly how they should be. Meanwhile the younger generation, Harry obviously but also William and Kate, always strike me as being on the brink of tears and begging for forgiveness for the unforgivable crime of their privilege and royalty.